Hi guys. Okay, well, I wanted to make a video before I go to bed tonight and I'm just playing around really with the Dell webcam central feature on this laptop that I'm using. So it's just kind of fun little video plus hopefully it distracts from how horrendous I'm looking. Um, it's pretty late, it's like 11 so I need to be getting to bed soon because I have to be bright up bright and early in order to uh, get to work in the morning so anyway I just wanted to come on because today I watched a really interesting video by the Violet Cat and she was doing a video response to Annie also known as Mirth and Reverence about working in in a group versus solitary working so I'm going to come at this from an angle where in my pagan tradition, my pagan path, I've worked both as a solitary and as part of a group, not as a coven, but as part of a group. I was a member of um, a pagan group when I was living in Huddersfield and I miss those guys terribly. Um, I sort of started out on my path back in maybe 2008, around then, and so at the beginning I was very much on my own and I think the Violet Cat makes a very good point that when you're working on your own it's, it's really useful from the perspective that you are entirely focused on, on what you need, what your needs are and so you learn about what interests you and what you want to achieve and so you're very sort of inwardly focused and I guess it's a really good time to build up your relationship with the divine and with any deities that you are working with. On the flip side in my experience working as part of a group is really important for the sort of social community aspect that solitaries can often struggle with. Now I feel very blessed to have been a part of a group of pagan people around the Huddersfield area mainly because even though we all came from different backgrounds and different traditions and our belief systems were possibly slightly different. What we used to do was meet up um, around the full moon and just have a nice gathering and it was kind of, it was more of a social thing than a religious meeting but it was great just to get, get together with like-minded people and, and have discussions and generally just go and have a look at the moon from a fantastic location outdoors and you know there was fire spinning and all sorts of things went on and you know we just met for a couple of hours and we all sort of brought food and drink for kind of cakes and ale and we did a couple of rituals together on, on a couple of occasions and sometimes celebrated the sabbats and and some guys would meet for sort of morning rituals um, around the summer solstice and those sorts of things and <clears throat> that was just really great to feel a connection and feel like you weren't totally on your own and having now moved away from that area and going back to being totally solitary again it is something that I'm really missing to the extent that I have found myself going to other group worship areas to try and re-establish that connection that I felt with, with the group I was practicing with. Now it's not been going so well with me, for me and as much as the area I am in does have a, a number of pagans, there seems to be little or no interest in getting together to form some sort of group so I really 
I really feel that spirit is leading me along the lines of, along the path of trying to get a group established or at least just sort of a, a monthly moot or something like that. Because having had the experience of group celebrations and, and group worship, it is something that I now miss. Um, as much as I think that solitary practice, you know, at the end of the day, you can only practice your, by yourself anyway, um, if you're ever going to truly build up a relationship with the divine, you need to be doing things on your own. You can't just go to the group things and, and do nothing in between. Um, as much as I think that is true, I think the social aspect and the community aspect is so very important. And that's another reason why I'm so keen to sort of get back into the YouTube community because I myself cut myself away from the YouTube community at the same time that I moved so I, I, I lost the, the physical contact with people and you know I've been there, I've done that, it's a struggle, it's really hard and sometimes you do, do just need to be able to uh, have contact, have contact with those who s share similar beliefs. I'm really sorry that I'm stumbling over my words tonight, it's because I'm tired and um, <clears throat> so I'm sorry, this is not the smoothest video you've ever seen from me. Um, so anyway, I think I think the whole subject of community worship versus solitary worship is a very interesting one. When when you're working solitary, you don't, or at least I I feel I don't raise as much energy as when I'm with a group. I think we all feed off each other. There's more general energy being put out in a group ritual than when I'm doing things on, on my own. So when I'm practicing on my own and I, I do a ritual, they, they tend to be more simplistic, they tend to be quicker, they tend to generally be quieter and, you know, more thoughtful and inward. Whereas when I'm celebrating as part of a group, even if it's a, a solemn occasion such as maybe at Sawin or something, um, it's really good to, to feel the energy that is raised during the workings and to just sort of bounce off each other, bounce off ide ideas off each other. I find it easier to be more spontaneous when I'm working on my own. Sometimes I am a bit, I feel a bit daunted when I'm in a group and I don't like to speak up and, and say things which are in my heart as much because just from a self-confidence perspective, which is a shame. Um, but then if, I, if I'm working on my own then that's absolutely fine. When I'm working on my own, sometimes I'll work skyclad. I would never dream of working skyclad um, if there were other people around. And, and that's that's another video that I will do another time, is, is talking about the, um, the skyclad versus not working skyclad. Um, I mean, when you're working on your own, of course, you can make things more simplistic. You don't necessarily have to have ritual garb, um, you don't necessarily have to, you know, follow a set tradition or, or cast a circle if you don't want to or, you know, follow everything by the rule book, so to say. When you're in a group, there are rules and regulations, or at least there tend to be. But the only reason for them, for having rules and regulations and, and a way of doing things is so that everybody knows what's going to happen next so nobody's sort of caught out and 
and something unexpected happens. Unless, of course, that is a, a miracle blessing from above. Of course, at group, group rituals, there's always something that goes slightly amiss. Maybe the fire doesn't take, or, you know, maybe maybe everyone's got handouts and they'll blow away. Who knows? Um, and that is, again, part of, part of the fun and part of being in the moment of a group ritual. Anyway, I am clearly wittering on and I, I, I hope you know what I'm trying to say. I think there are pros and cons of of both working on your own and working as part of a group. One thing I would say is that I think this is true for most pagan traditions or at least most of us here in the YouTube community. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong because I'm sure there are people that um, disagree. But on the whole, um, one of maybe one of the, the the reasons that we find ourselves on the our path, on the path that we're currently on, is because we shy away from anything too dogmatic. Now, when you bring a large-ish group of people together, you are always going to have people who disagree with some aspects of other people's beliefs. So therefore, <clears throat> I think in order to be more organised and to have group worship sessions, there is an element of dogma required to keep everyone on sort of straight and narrow so everyone knows what you know to share the common beliefs and I think that can sometimes become become a problem because obviously when you are working on your own you can just make it up as you see fit and you know it's everything that suits you because you're on your own and it, it doesn't matter when you're in a group You've really got to be aware of the other people in the group. You've, you've got to take that on board. And within a group setting, some things you might not agree with. Um, and of course, you're always going to get different voices that are heard within that group and different energies and different souls that shine out more than others. And, and that can be a really, really positive thing. And it should be a really, really positive thing because if we were all the same, it would be very, very boring. But on the other hand, you also need to sort of be aware that you're in a group setting, so you need to be more conscious of the people around you and be aware that not everyone is necessarily going to fully believe everything that you believe and have the same values that you, you hold. <clears throat> so anyway, I am going to go now because I've been here for, wow, quite a while and I just I just wanted to chip in really I think this is a very interesting topic and I hope lots of people will make video responses if you do make a response please post a video um, to this video just so that I can see it and keep on top of everything because I seem to have tons of subscriptions at the moment and I'm really struggling to keep up with everybody so um, I think it's a, a really interesting topic and I'm looking forward to see what everyone else's opinions are. Okay, I'm going off now to the land of dreams and so I, I bid you all a beautiful and blessed evening and night or day, wherever you are, whatever time it is. And um, I will speak to you all soon. Blessed be guys. Bye. Bye.